Responsive UI design. Where your UI adjusts based on the dimensions of your screen size shouldn't be difficult for a cross-platform framework like .NET MAUI that runs on mobile and desktop devices. But in some cases, it is difficult. So in this demo, I have what is essentially a footer component. So I have my logo over here and then some footer links over here. So obviously on desktop, this looks fine. But as our screen size gets smaller or our width decreases, as you can see, we don't adjust and things start to clip. So our logo clips and our footer links clip and we can't really click all of them. So our UI is not responsive to this smaller screen width. So ideally I would want something like this. Let's throw in an example that I prepared where when our width gets small, we start wrapping things. So our links start to stack, our links and logo stack on top of each other. And in fact, our logo and links center in the screen. So for large screen widths, I would want to show this top footer component. And for small screen widths, I would want to show this bottom footer component because we want this to be responsive for desktop and mobile devices. So in the web development world, we would just use media queries, which are built in to CSS, and we would adjust some styles based on the width of our screen. But in .NET Mali, there isn't some sort of built-in media query solution that we can tap into. So we're gonna have to roll something ourselves. So let's start off by focusing on one part of our UI. Let's try and stack these two columns of links when our screen size gets small. So currently our two columns are side by side via this horizontal stack layout. So basically, instead of a horizontal stack layout, when our screen size gets small, we want this to be basically a vertical stack layout. And sometimes it's easier to think of things in terms of mobile first. So it might help us to make this a vertical stack layout first. And when our screen width gets large, we make this go horizontal. But, aha, kind of tricky. So we can't switch this component between different types. So we can't have a vertical stack layout and a horizontal stack layout, or at least it would be tricky to do that. Instead, we can just have a regular stack layout with an orientation of vertical. And now we've changed the problem a little bit too. When our screen width gets large, we wanna change the orientation to horizontal. So instead we're focusing on changing the style rather than the entire component. So that's one improvement that's gonna simplify this. So now how are we gonna switch this orientation between vertical and horizontal depending on our screen width? And I've already kind of hinted on this, we're gonna use a style. And the style is gonna have a trigger that binds to our window width. And whenever our window width is above a certain amount, then we're gonna to switch to different styles. So let's try this out. We're gonna have a stack layout style. We needed to expand this because we're gonna have triggers in here. So let's have a style targeting our stack layout, of course. Let's add some triggers in here. And this trigger is gonna be based on a binding. We're gonna be binding to our window width. So this needs to be a data trigger. And of course, this data trigger is gonna target our stack layout type. And this is where we get into the good part. So this is where we're gonna have a binding to our window width. So we're gonna to bind to some sort of width property, but this binding needs to point to our window. And to find our window, we can set the source property and we can actually walk up our UI tree by setting the relative source ancestor type to a window. So basically what this is doing is binding to the width property on the nearest window type in our UI element tree. So we get the width of our window, that's great, but what do we do with it? Because this data trigger, we can't really do anything with the target value here. We can't say something like 800 because then basically our data trigger is only going to apply any setters in here whenever the width is 800. And that's not what we want. We want to apply setters whenever the width is greater than 800, which 800 being the ideal size for our desktop styles to come into play, which I'm not actually sure about. We might play around with this number. So in this case, we want to convert this width to a Boolean that'll tell us whether or not our width is greater than a certain value. And that is going to be done via a converter. So let's add a converter and it's going to be called the greater than converter. Because what we're doing is we're converting our width to a Boolean if it's greater than a certain value. So for XAML binding converters, we inherit from, or we implement I value converter. Let's add that. So I believe we only need to implement convert because this is gonna be a one-way binding where we're getting our window width and we're not gonna be setting our window width. So I don't think we need to set convert back for now, unless we were using this converter somewhere else. 
So the value that we get passed in is gonna be our width. Right now it's an object, so we're gonna to have to validate it is a double. And then we're also gonna take a parameter, and that's gonna be the number that we're comparing our width against, which is also gonna be a double. But right now these are objects, so again, we need to validate these. So let's just do some parsing on this double. So we'll check if the value, which is gonna be our width, can be parsed to a double. And we also wanna try and parse our parameter to a double. And if either of these can't be parsed, then we're just gonna return false. So at this point, after this check, we can just do our comparison. So all we wanna check is if our parsed value, which is our width, is greater than our parameter that we're comparing against. By the way, I kind of went through this fast, really just focusing on concepts here. I'll link all of this code in the description. But now let's use this converter. So back in our main page, let's import the namespace that has our converter. Let's call this local. And I believe it's just in our responsive design namespace. There we go. We now need to define our converter. So in our content page resources, we're going to define our greater than converter and add a key for it so that we can reference it down in our binding. So let's add our converter here. So pointing to our greater than converter resource. So this is referencing the key that we gave our converter. And now we also need the converter parameter. So what are we comparing against? And I think we'll try out a screen size of 800. So if our width is greater than 800, we wanna to go to horizontal. And now, as we've mentioned, this is converting to a Boolean. So we only wanna apply these styles when our converter returns true and our width is greater than 800. So what are we waiting for? Let's try this out. Again, just doing one style at a time here. Let's verify that this works. All right, here we go. This is already a good sign. So we are on our screen size. This is greater than 800 pixels. As you can see, these are aligned horizontally. That's good. So let's see if our screen size gets smaller. We should undo these setters and go from horizontal back to vertical. Here we go. There we go. Perfect. So now it's just a matter of applying this data trigger to other styles in our layout. And I'll do that off camera because it's going to be kind of repetitive, but we'll come back and review it. All right, not so bad. Let's look at the results. So our flex layout in mobile, we have our logo and our links in a column. We align them in the center of our screen, but then in desktop, if we make this bigger, we change it into a row. So our logo and links all in a row and we justify them with space between as we see. And then the only other responsive style we needed was the second column of links. So in mobile, we add margin to the top, 10 top margin, but then in desktop, we add 50 margin to the left, as we can kind of see pretty significant gap there. So this is what I have initially in mind for responsiveness in .NET MAUI. So binding to the window width and then using a converter to check if it's greater than our desktop breakpoint and then applying desktop styles, while by default we'll apply mobile styles. So again, just an initial prototype here. I don't really like how much code this takes. So you have to expand the whole style, add a data trigger, which this binding is pretty long as well. So feel free to experiment with this and find some other mechanism to slim it down. I know I will be. I think attached properties or behaviors could be a viable option here for reducing some of the boilerplate here and making this way more reusable. So I might have to try that out. So just an experimental concept here. We've accomplished responsiveness. So hopefully you can apply this to your own .NET MAUI application to have a responsive UI between desktop and mobile devices.